Okay, now. James chapter 2, verse 8. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you fulfill that law, you're doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails at one point, or in one point, he has become accountable for all of it. For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not commit murder or do not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So, so listen, you better speak. This is it. Uh, so speak and act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy mercy triumphs over judgment this statement the law of liberty by the way does not mean the law of Jesus setting us free it's very specific that the law of liberty here the thing that James is saying sets you free is following the law of Moses which we know can't be because the Jews reje rejected the Jews uh, rejected their Messiah and were following Moses. And in Moses' law, it says that if you, if you follow the law, you will be blessed. So here we have the verse that says that if we, um, if we uh, keep the whole law but fail at one point, <clears throat> we become accountable for all of it. But this is James. But it seems that Paul and James must be uh, talking about one another. Because here we have in Galatians, written by Paul, chapter 5. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke. And he's talking about the law, a yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, if you accept James's premise here, right which is following the, the the law because the pharisees the the jews of the sect of the pharisees said you must be circumcised and follow the law of moses this is who he's talking to <clears throat> he said christ will be of no advantage to you why just like in hebrews he said there's no, no longer any sacrifice if you throw away christ for the law <clears throat> and then it says right here i i testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. That means that if you, if you are under the law, you have, you have to think and act that you should be judged. And this is, this is a, a, an, an exact, this is, seems like one person wrote about this, and then James wrote about this, or James wrote about this, then Paul wrote about this. Okay? But Paul is saying that if you do this, if you try to keep the whole law and act as if you're going to be judged by the law, you're throwing away Christ. So he basically says, Look, I say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are, you are severe. You are severed. You are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of, the right, uh, of righteousness. For in Christ, Jesus neither, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. You see, here we have verses that are very similar. And a lot of times you see things that are written in James, Paul is also writing about. And, but it just seems like it looks like one letter answering the other. So this is uh, Galatians chapter 5 as opposed to James chapter 2. Thank you. God bless.